a few steps to climb to reach the forecourt of the Palais de l'Europe. Standing before you is this imposing building, the work of Henri Bernard, the French architect who also designed the Maison de la Radio in Paris. The Palais de l'Europe was inaugurated in 1977. Previously, the site was occupied by the Maison de l'Europe, built in the 1950s, which was home to the first European institutions in Strasbourg. The Palais de l'Europe is made up of a square base with a 106-metre side. The nine-storey building is 38 metres high. Three colours are predominant. The pink of the concrete buttresses and base structure made of Vosges sandstone, the grey of the aluminium-covered façade and the brown of the large windows of the meeting rooms. The rotunda extending out from the façade is the Committee of Ministers meeting room, which you'll discover once inside. The 46 flags of the Council of Europe member states standing in front of the Palais de l'Europe are arranged in English alphabetical order. You're now entering the Palais de l'Europe. Note the striking contrast between the apparent plastic austerity outside and the reassuring fluid atmosphere inside dominated by a whole set of wooden arches. Nearly 1,000 people pass through the main entrance of the Palais de l'Europe every day, just as you have. They include Council of Europe staff members, heads of state, ministers, diplomats, members of parliament and experts. In the hall, you'll notice the 12 mahogany arches which support the building's structure. 12, like the number of gold stars on the European flag, which was devised by the Council of Europe in 1955. You can take the grand staircase which leads to the two iconic rooms of the Palais de l'Europe, the Parliamentary Assembly Chamber and the Committee of Ministers room. Here you're on the first floor, in the chamber lobby, where during sessions parliamentarians meet in a less formal setting and where they can be interviewed by journalists. Exhibitions and official ceremonies are also held there. Please now enter the Parliamentary Assembly Chamber. This is where members of the national parliaments of the 46 Council of Europe member states meet four times a year. The Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe comprises 306 members of parliament and the same number of substitutes. Delegations vary in size from 2 to 18 members, depending on the population of the member states. Members are not grouped together in the chamber by nationality or political allegiance. They are quite simply placed in the alphabetical order of their surnames. This is because they come first and foremost to defend the interest of Europe, not their political interests or only those of their countries. They speak from their seats, with speaking times generally limited to three minutes either in one of the Council of Europe's two official languages, English or French, or in one of the two other working languages, German or Italian. In the booths that you can see all around the room, interpreters provide interpretation of the speeches and interventions into other languages as well. Note the bench of the Presidency at the foot of the mahogany arches. The rostrum in front of it is for VIPs invited to make speeches. For example, Mikhail Gorbachev, Vaclav Havel, Angela Merkel, David Cameron, Emmanuel Macron and Pope Francis. Each seat is equipped with an electronic voting system, a box of three buttons, for voting in favour, against or abstaining. The results of votes are displayed instantly on the screens on either side of the Presidency's bench. All the debates are public. The public gallery overlooking the chamber makes it possible to welcome many visitors interested in European debates. The chamber also hosted the first sessions of the European Parliament, which sat here from 1979 until 1999 before this European Union institution moved into its own premises, the Louis Weiss building, located a stone's throw from the Palais de l'Europe. Throughout the year, other meetings may be held in the chamber, such as the sessions of the Congress of Local and Regional Authorities, 
the World Forum for Democracy and thematic international conferences. You've left the assembly chamber and moved to the second floor. First of all, you'll notice the anteroom of the Committee of Ministers, where exhibitions are regularly staged. From there, on your left, you'll arrive at a large number of meeting rooms and on your right, at the Committee of Ministers' room itself. The Committee of Ministers is the decision-making body of the Council of Europe. It brings together in this room the Ministers of Foreign Affairs of the 46 Member States or their permanent representatives, who are ambassadors based in Strasbourg. These representatives meet once or twice a week. They sit in English alphabetical order of their countries. The Member States take turns in chairing the Committee of Ministers, rotating every six months in the same alphabetical order. The exchanges between the ministers or representatives take place in the two official languages, that is, English or French. Simultaneous interpretation is provided from the interpreters' booths. In this room, as in the Chamber of the Parliamentary Assembly, the dialogue between 46 member countries, sometimes with very different views, helps to strengthen European cooperation.